What's going on guys? Welcome to your third physics tutorial. We're going to learn about unit conversion because it's a huge thing in physics. Your textbook always tries to trick you, throw you for some loops, and uh, we need to understand how to convert units and all that good stuff. Now basically what we're going to have to remember is the unit prefixes. So for like meters, we have some prefixes, or actually let's just um, go to the standard unit for mass, which is kilograms. Now grams is basically the unit type. Kilo is the prefix, um, basically saying a thousand, uh, a thousand grams. So we could have a kilometer, um, a thousand meters, basically. And there's a lot of these prefixes that you'll see often in the textbook. And you're like, dang it, I have to remember that stuff. But let's just talk about them real quick. So we're going to be working with meters. And as you know, 1,000 meters is equal to one kilometer. There's also other ones that are smaller for uh, a meter, like a micrometer, a nanometer, stuff like that. So I'm just going to write them out and then we'll talk about them. So here's the ones that we use most often in physics. Like I talked about earlier, the kilometer is specified with a K um, and that's basically equal to 1000 meters. And this is scientific notation. If you guys don't know what that means, that's fine. That's what the next tutorial is for. So if this really confuses you, check out the next tutorial, kind of what scientific notation is. But basically it's saying 10 to the third. So that's 1000, 10 times 10 times 10, 1000. Um, we also have centimeters, which is basically 10 to the negative two. So what that's saying is 100 uh, centimeters is equal to one meter. What we use for the prefix on that is centa, which is a lowercase c, milla, lowercase m, uh, micro, which is like this thing. It's not, it's not really an m, it's something like, like that, I don't know. It's kind of weird. But uh, that's what the micro is, that's 10 to the negative 6. Nano is 10 to the negative 9th. So that's a really small distance because we have point and then zero eights, or I'm sorry, eight zeros, dyslexic or something, I don't know. Um, and then one meters is equal to one nanometer. Um, and that prefix is nano, which is just a lowercase n. And those are pretty much the main prefixes that we'll be seeing in physics. Um, so write those down, kind of get familiar with them, and that's all good. Now let's go into the example for today. So let's open up our handy dandy textbook, and it says our stomach can support a gravitational force of 75 newtons. So how much bacon can you eat and still survive? So what are we going to need for this example? Well, our handy dandy force equation, which is just force is equal to mass times acceleration. Um, and as you can see here, it tells us the stomach force. So we're going to plug that in, 75 newtons. And also, one thing I didn't mention is the book specifies that it wants to know how much bacon you can eat in grams of bacon. So again, we know the force is equal to mass times acceleration, which is kilograms times, you know, meters per second squared. So that's something to keep in mind because our textbook wants it in grams. So we have 75 newtons equal to however much bacon we can eat times the acceleration of gravity, which is 9.81 meters per second squared. And all we're going to do is divide uh, 9.81 on both sides and our units um, on both sides as well, but I'm not going to write those out. And what we come up with is 7.645 uh, kilograms is equal to our mass. So we can eat this much bacon without dying. Even though it probably won't be too good for you, it would be delicious. Um, but again, our textbook wants it in grams. So what we need to do is we need to convert our kilograms into grams. And how we do that is we're just going to copy and paste our answer here. And again, we want to get rid of the kilograms. So we're going to times this equation by one. What I know you're telling yourself is like, hey, why are we times it by one? That's going to do nothing. Well, if we flip back over to our conversion chart, we saw that one kilogram is equal to 1,000 grams, right? And so these are pretty much the same thing. So if we had like a stone that was one kilogram in mass, if uh, someone came up and asked me like, hey, what's the mass of that stone? I'm like, one kilogram. They're like, cool, thanks, man. See you later. I'm like, peace, homie. And then someone else comes up and asks me, hey, how, how much is that uh, stone you got there? How much mass is in that? I'm like, oh, 1,000 grams. He's going to be like, oh, cool, man. All right, catch you later. Peace. 
Basically, I told them the same answer, I just used a different unit. If we divide the exact same thing by itself, like if we had 56 divided by 56, well, that's equal to 1, right? So we could take this equation times 1 times 56 divided by 56, and we haven't changed our answer at all. But since these two things are the exact same thing as well, 1 kilogram is equal to 1,000 grams, what we can do is we can divide them, because if we divide anything by itself, it's going to be 1, and it's not going to affect our equation. So if we have two things that are the exact same, we're going to divide them. So that's exactly what we're going to do for our equation. We're going to take our answer and we want to get rid of the kilograms so we're going to put the unit of kilograms on the bottom. And then we're going to look at our conversion chart we're going to say oh, okay one kilogram is equal to 1000 grams. So we're just going to put one here and 1000 here and put our unit which is grams and if we times this out it's essentially times the equation by one but we're just converting our unit types our, we can cancel our kilograms on the top of our equation as long as we cancel it out on the bottom and all we're left with is grams. So we're just going to have 7,640 grams of bacon that we can eat without dying. Or we're basically pushing our limit because we're right on the fence with that. Then we have to look at our information that we were given which is two units. As you can see it only gave us the force here um, which is two significant figures. So we need to round this off to two significant figures, which is 7,600 grams of bacon we could eat uh, with being, and being safe. Let's say we have another question that talks about force, which is equal to mass times acceleration. And they give us the acceleration, which is one kilometer over hours squared. Now we know that won't work to figure out how many newtons of force there is of any particular kind of question that we might have. Because again, what this equation is set up to be is meters per second squared. So what we'd have to do first is convert this into meters per second squared. Uh, so that's what we're going to do real quickly now. And we're going to be like, okay, we need to get this into meters per second. So I'm going to get rid of the kilometers first. And we know that there's 1,000 meters in one kilometer. And then we need to get rid of our hours. And saying hours squared is the same as saying hour times hour, right? So now we need to convert an hour into seconds. So we're going to put our hour on top to get rid of one of our hours. Get rid of that one first because it's sloppy. And one hour is equal to 3,600 seconds. Um, so that will get rid of one of our hours. And then we need to get rid of the other hour as well. So again, we're just going to do... 3600 seconds down below and if you just look at the unit types uh, you can see once we multiply this out we get rid of all those things and we're left with meters per second squared and it's probably some really small number I don't know um, we'll just say it equals something like that um, for our actual number value so all I really want you guys to focus on is the units and then we can do the math of the actual number values later um, and that's kind of how that will work. Um, but hopefully you guys kind of understand how to convert unit types now. And also, just hopefully you guys uh, will look at your textbooks carefully and see what you see which units are giving you and know how to convert them and what to convert them to and what you're looking for. So hopefully that helps you guys out and uh, I'll catch you in the next tutorial. Have a good one.